Robert Remus performed as professional wrestler Sergeant Slaughter in the real world and also as Sergeant Slaughter the Drill Instructor in the 1980s G.I. Joe animated series. While he is the most well-known G.I. Joe character from the 1982 to 1994 line based on a real person, he was neither the first nor the last. I'm Dan Larson and this is 8 G.I. Joe figures based on real people. Number one is Cutter, AKA Skip A. Stone. 1983 Hasbro's resident G.I. Joe figure designer, Ron Rudat, produced a series of illustrations for new characters, one of whom was the hovercraft pilot. While the name, Skip A. Stone, was not intentionally derived from an actual person, his likeness, as noted on the original sketches, was literally Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans was a Red Sox outfielder from 1972 to 1990, and Hasbro was based out of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, where the Red Sox minor league team plays their home games. It explains Cutter's Red Sox cap and makes sense since the folks at Hasbro were likely big Red Sox fans as well. At number two, continuing the New England sports team homages, 1985 saw the release of Bazooka, the G.I. Joe missile specialist. He is clearly wearing the number 14 jersey of then New England Patriots quarterback Steve Grogan, and while I admit I've never been able to prove my theory, I believe, like Cutter and Dwight Evans, Bazooka's likeness was based on Steve Grogan directly with a slight change of hair coloring. If you take a look at Grogan's 1989 Topps traded football card, it seems pretty clear that this look was the inspiration for Alpine's gruff sidekick. Number three is Rocky. In 1985, Sylvester Stallone single-handedly ended the Cold War by turning the Russian crowd into Rocky fans after Rocky was able to defeat the big Russian super soldier, Ivan Drago. Seeing the potential marketing possibilities, Hasbro acquired the rights to use Rocky as the personal combat instructor to the Joe team. Designs were drawn up, a bio was approved, and Rocky was even included in the second issue of the G.I. Joe Order of Battle, an index of all the G.I. Joe members at the time. Hasbro went so far as to create his Cobra counterpart in the character named Big Boa. It's a play on words. Rocky and Big Boa. Rocky Big Boa, get it? <laughs> Unfortunately for Hasbro, and me, Stallone decided to kill the licensing rights for a Rocky figure since his likeness was already going to be used in the totally inappropriate for kids Rambo and the Force of Freedom line from Coleco hitting shelves that same year. Thanks for nothing, Sly. I just want to hear him say, Yo, Joe! once. Number four is Sergeant Slaughter. The death of Rocky would mean the birth of the character that would dominate the cartoon and commercials from 1987 to 1990. The rights to Sergeant Slaughter were not only acquired by Hasbro, but they incorporated him as the major character promoting the brand and essentially leading the team for a three-year period. He may not be the first character to be based on a real person's likeness, but he is the first character to be both a real person and to be completely integrated into the toy line, the comic, and the cartoon, and appear as the character in a live action capacity. Number five is Tunnel Rat. Released in 1987 as part of the roster refresh known as G.I. Joe the Movie, Tunnel Rat, the Joe's explosive ordnance disposal specialist, had a likeness based on G.I. Joe writer Larry Hama. Calling him a writer doesn't even approach the degree to which Larry Hama was responsible for the G.I. Joe mythology. He wrote nearly every issue of the original run of Marvel's G.I. Joe comic book, but he also wrote the majority of the file cards. Hamma was more than a writer, he was the keeper of the legends. He was the mythologist, the archivist. It's Larry Hamma's sandbox. We're all just playing in it. Number six is Sneak Peek. Also released in 1987, Sneak Peek's actual name is Owen King. Owen King happens to be the son of a reclusive horror writer from Maine. Perhaps you've heard of Stephen King? Legend has it that King's son was a huge G.I. Joe fan, and hey, these are the kind of things you get to have when you're as wealthy and popular as Stephen King. I mean, it's not like there were any other kids out there who were also huge fans of G.I. Joe who might have liked to have a character named after them, right? Wait, what's the big deal? Why is this a big deal? Why are we even talking about this? No one even likes Sneak Peek. I don't care. What's next? Number seven is The Fridge. In 1986, the New England Patriots and the Chicago Bears faced each other in Super Bowl Dos Equis. The Patriots were utterly undressed in front of the global viewing audience, losing 46 to 10, is that right? Yeesh. Never want to miss out on the opportunity to cash in on a marketable name, Hasbro acquired the rights to William the Refrigerator Perry's likeness. Officially known as The Fridge, 
Perry was enlisted as the Joe's physical training instructor, which, I mean, it's still funny today. It's still funny. A big fat guy who can barely run is the PTI guy. It's still funny. Also, he had a football on a chain as a weapon. And finally, at number eight, in 1989, the figure Scoop was released to great fanfare as kids finally got to see their favorite Today Show journalist, Mike Leonard, honored as a member of the Joe Squad. Not only is his facial likeness based on Mike Leonard, but Scoop's actual name is Leonard Michaels to further connect the two. While I can appreciate the 30-year resume of journalistic integrity and innovation, I'm a little disappointed that Hasbro never followed through with a series of Joes honoring other famous journalists. Surely Cobra would have been on their heels had they ever faced Donald Samuelson, Paul Janey, or Gammon Peters. That's the list. Let me know in the comments section below who your favorite journalist is. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future lists. Thanks for watching. Pork chop sandwiches!